Thank you, Mr. Chair, Henderson Massey, local board members, Councillor Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this opportunity to present the dangers of the 5G electromagnetic telecommunications rollout that is about to take place in 2020 in Auckland without public consultation or consent. And this is particularly concerning. Because of the health and safety dangers of the 5G wireless electromagnetic frequencies, which many people don't know much about because it's not yet in the public domain of constant debate. But some of us have done a lot of study on it and are concerned because the medical profession and scientists have shown that there are these dangers to health and environment. So my name is Laurie Ross with my colleague Kim Knight and we're with Concerned Citizens for 5G Free West Auckland and New Zealand Aotearoa. And because we know that this poses a real threat to health and safety and this is the level of local board concern, we need to ask Henderson Massey Local Board to recommend to Auckland Council to invoke the precautionary principle to protect the health and safety of citizens and the environment until significant independent scientific research is done on the cumulative biological effects of the 5G EMFs, electromagnetic frequencies. It's also called radio radiation fields or frequencies. So it's a new technology and many of us, most of us are not electronic engineers or technicians or even scientists or even doctors, but we are all concerned citizens and we want to know the effects. And I also want to remind ourselves that to roll out such an untested technology without public consent or consultation is a violation of our freedom, our human rights, and our democratic process. So the industry position you're wondering is, well, Vodafone, Spark, two degrees. They're just thinking, of course, about how they can maximize their profitability with a new generation of technology. And it's not just a step up from 4 to 5G. We have to remember that this is going to affect every part of our lives. It's called the Internet of Things. So everything in your life will be connected to 5G. Cell phones, um, meters, cars, you name it, fridges, toasters. And we have to question, is this really the future we want? Do we have any choice? We should think about it. And we have to remember that the telcos are in denial of the danger. So they just cite the um, 1998 outdated industry standards of the International Commission on Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, ICNIRP. That's 20 years ago. It doesn't apply to 5G. So we really need updated standards. And I ask you to heed the warning of the 230 scientists and doctors in the moratorium, asking for a moratorium on 5G. And they put this appeal to the United Nations, World Health Organization, European Commission, calling for this moratorium of 5G on Earth and in space. Now my colleague will talk more about the health dangers. So 5G is not a next generation upgrade from 2, 3 or 4G. It is a technology which utilizes high frequency pulsed microwave radiation plus millimeter wave radiation technology. While 5G has not been safety tested on humans, harmful effects on human health from the introduction of this technology can be anticipated on the basis of existing research. Due to the short distance the millimeter wave radiation travels, 
for a 5G system to work properly, it would require thousands of antennae every 100 to 500 meters on street lamps and posts. The short millimeter wave frequencies are unable to pass through trees and leaves, which obstruct their transmission, and therefore massive tree removal would be required for 5G rollout. Environmental destruction through loss of trees and pollinating insects would worsen climate change and dramatically lower agricultural productivity. It is planned to rocket launch 20,000 satellites into space over the next decade, blanketing the Earth with permanent pulsating and inescapable microwave radiation. No studies have been done on the health effects of this new ultra-powerful 5G technology, which has many doctors and scientists extremely concerned. Hence the current appeal to the United Nations and World Health Organization from 247 scientists in 42 countries. Health threats. Growth and exposure to urban EMF increased 3,000 times between 2000 and 2010, and much more since. The non-ionizing radiation used in 5G endangers health, especially of children, pregnant women, and the elderly. The general public are often unaware of the harmful effects of wireless radiation due to not knowing how the electromagnetic spectrum works. EM waves travel unseen and silently, leading people to falsely assume they are having no effect. It is only by becoming informed through scientific research and data that one comes to understand the true ramifications of electromagnetic radiation on health. From the thousands of research studies which have been done, here are a few salient points. In 2011, the International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, classified microwave radiation as a possible carcinogen. New research supports a recategorization to a probable carcinogen or proven carcinogen. Harmful effects to human pathology include damage to the eyes, the endocrine system, immune system, nervous system, skin, cells, leading to symptoms such as cognitive impairment, blood cell mutation, DNA mutation, damage to unborn fetuses, lowered sperm count, disruption of cell metabolism, Increase in stress proteins, free radical damage, damage to the microbiome, and much more. Studies have shown an increased cancer risk for people living closer to cellular phone infrastructure, and that radiation from cell sites contributes to type 2 diabetes. Research indicates depression and other neuropsychiatric effects, such as dementia. Alzheimer's, ADHD and autism may occur as a result of continued exposure to microwave radiation. One of the most potentially disturbing and alarming effects of the proposed 5G is that due to the requirement for thousands of cell sites and satellites in space, this radiation will be inescapable and permanently on leaving people nowhere to hide. Just to give you a few more of the dangers you would want to know about, the fact that government and industry have been known to make mistakes in their safety regulations, and you just need to think of asbestos, DDT, tobacco, uh, and of course the leaded petrol. And so it doesn't seem unreasonable to ask for further safety tests and to know exactly what we're getting ourselves into before the deployment of the 5G. And also being aware that there may be a conflict of interest, that some of those making regulations may have some vested interest and, or conflict of interest in terms of market and industry. Plus the fact that 5G is originally a military technology called active denial systems and the fact that it is used or was used for crowd control, could be used again, non-lethal weapon systems. 
And finally, I want to mention that 5G smart devices are two-way transmitters. So they can collect our data wherever we are. They can be recording everything we say and do. So it's invasion of public privacy. It's, it's public surveillance. And we have to question if that's really acceptable. And in conclusion, I just want to say people should still have the freedom to live in a 5G free zone. Maybe there's some areas that will need to have 5G, but not, not everywhere. And citizens should have a choice to live in areas that are protecting the trees, birds, bees, and children from the dangers of 5G. And also, I want to draw your attention to New Zealand cities and local boards and councils, I would think, would still have the power to put a halt on the rollout of 5G until proper safety assessments, as has been done in Geneva, uh, in Rome, in Brussels, where the environment minister, Céline Fromont, said, the people of Brussels are not guinea pigs whose health I can sell at a profit. And in conclusion, the recommendation to Henderson Massey Local Board and Auckland City Council is to invoke the precautionary principle to halt the rollout of the 5G EMF wireless technology until independent scientific research is done on the cumulative biological effects of 5G on citizens and the environment and call to the New Zealand government for a moratorium on 5G until this independent scientific research is done. And meanwhile, ask Auckland Council and Community Committee for Environment uh, to establish an independent safety assessment on 5Gs and a safe G telecommunications council policy. Thank you. I just wondered if you knew what the proposed um, time frame rollout of 5G is? Well, it's 2020, so the uh, auctioning of the frequencies is supposed to occur in the early in the year, and then they're supposed to be all rolled out by the middle of the year, but already they're preparing the, the uh, posts, you know, for that infrastructure to be laid out. But I think it's, this is why we're so urgently acting now, because there's still time to prevent it. We don't have to wait like with the plastics crisis or the climate emergency crisis. You don't have to wait until we've got a real disaster on our hands. We can preempt it and say, well, wait a minute, let's stop this before it gets underway. And that's, if I just may respond, that's what even the electricians and electronic engineers that I've spoken to have said. They said they can't see any real need or reason for 5G because they get everything they want on Wi-Fi and 4G and they can turn it off. Whereas with 5G, you have no choice. You are bombarded 24-7. And, you know, we can go into that another time, but just to say that, yes, we still can have our cell phones, we still have our computers with what we've got, but what the industry is doing is creating a market. So we'll have to upgrade, as it were, but it's not just simply an upgrade to 5G, meaning everything has to be 5G. It's about the Internet of Things. So everything you own and everything you do is going to be connected to this 5G grid. Do we want that kind of power and control over ourselves by some invisible robotic artificial intelligence.